So good morning, everyone. I want to thank you so much for being here today. Um, I know I'm thrilled to be here. And I want you to know, I, you know, I, I always watch um, a couple of services before I get here with you guys. And at one of them, there was a song that the soloist sang, and it really touched me. And it's, um, it's uh, Your Soul is Welcome Here. And it just, uh, just really moved me today. So I just wanted to tell you also, your soul is welcome here. And I know that somewhere in today, in the talk, in the music, in the meditations, in the treatments, that exactly what you're seeking and what your soul is seeking is potentially here and ready to be revealed. So just sit back and take a deep breath. And we're going to start with an opening treatment, and our opening treatment today will be given by Harvey Bonell. So, Harvey, take it away. Welcome. Thank you. Well, when Candace uh, said our theme for today was Blue Christmas, I immediately thought of the Elvis Presley song. Oh, I'll have a blue Christmas. <laughs> With a, and then she explained she was talking about 2020 and all of the blue losses we may have had or may still have from this very turbulent year. The fear of COVID, the fear of fire, and the reality of incessant smoke in our midst. Staying home, feeling locked down and sometimes isolated from those we love, friends and family, and the loss of our connection with our spiritual center until now, which usually uplifts us to help maintain a more positive attitude. Also dealing with the fears of four more years of divisive and authoritarian leadership. It's easy to feel the losses, the fears, the depression and anxiety that makes us blue and sad. We may have felt out of balance and pulled off of center. But there is another blue that can help us to regain the balance we have lost. And this is what the treatment today is about. So if you would close your eyes and let us feel the understanding of Ernest Holmes and the acceptance and power of the best of the great religions of the world. In the Hindu chakra system, our throat chakra is blue and crucial in the body. It is associated with our ability to listen attentively as well as to communicate with other people. When our throat chakra is blocked out or out of balance, we can easily feel a loss for words. Although, and along with other physical symptoms associated with the throat, when our throat chakra is in balance, we may be filled with self-expression and clear communication. We are able to listen well without judgment and express our feelings and thoughts with compassion and with the power of our heart and mind. This can be referred to as our true voice, where we can listen attentively and communicate clearly with others. When there is a right balance of the throat chakra, we can express our feelings effectively through communication using a pleasant and clear voice. It improves the artistic and the spiritual abilities in our bodies. This is enhanced through meditation. Our other blue chakra is indigo or royal blue, a deeper and richer blue. This is associated with our third eye chakra, which enables us to see the bigger picture by imagining and seeing things from within. When the third eye chakra is balanced, we can have clear visions and relate to each other more effectively by sharing essential ideas. It can also improve the telepathic abilities and reduce the fear of death, the sense of thought and imagination is connected with this chakra. It is the main center of intuition in the body. It enables us to live focused 
on our daily activities. So as we treat right now for positive blue and royal blue, we acknowledge these qualities within ourselves. So we know that right here and right now, we are balanced in our blue chakras with a clear mind that is aligned with our hearts. Our royal blue third eye is relaxed enough to see the big picture. Our connections with our divinity are enhanced. Clarity and full use of our creative imagination are present. We feel this right here and right now. We receive clear messages and feel fully alive. Our thoughts are clear and open. Our intuition is active and in tune. And our blue throat chakra allows us to right here and right now to listen to and hear others as they are, as they are, and to communicate our, tru our truth clearly. We gain more connection with others through clear communications and dialogue and self-expression in many ways. We use our true voice. Our lives are now more vivid and filled with the vision and reality of all the colors of the rainbow. And in this approaching holiday season just beginning, we will see more brighter reds and more vivid greens. We are filled with the spirit of clarity, of love, of joy, and of peace. We are grateful for these powers we have, and we use them to release all of the sad blue thoughts and experiences of 2020 and improve ourselves in these healthy blue and colorful ways to make a joyous new blue and bright Christmas season with our own inner powers as we quiet ourselves and let what is always within us emerge from our souls. We let the love wash over us. We let it be. We let the joy wash over us. We let it be and we let the peace wash over us. We let, we let it be. We let this all be and so it is. Okay, thank you very much, Harvey. And so um, now we're gonna have some music by David. So David, take it away. You need to unmute yourself. <laughs> He's in the other room, you know, so. <laughs>
Thank you, David. That was really beautiful. And just see, oh, never mind. <laughs> Your camera went off, but now it's back on. So, hey. <laughs> okay, well, again, I want to welcome all of you to the service. And uh, the topic today is Blue Christmas slash holiday. Um, and I want to give credit where credit is due. I This is not an original thing for me. This uh, came from um, as far as I can see, it came from one of the uh, co-ministers or, or co-senior ministers at the Dallas Center, um, Dr. Petra Weldes. And um, I actually watched uh, a service. And, and so she's been doing this for a number of years. And I watched one of her services and I was very moved. So it is about... Uh, Kind of that you know the, the holidays can be really wonderful but they can also be really challenging and it's important for all of us to find a way to make them work or at least it's important to me to find a way to get the holidays to make sense and go smoothly and um and to feel the sacredness of this time uh and yet it's it seems to be one of the times where you know things are very difficult uh the suicide rate goes up a lot around in december and there are just a lot of people that are in a lot of pain um and for some reason this what is supposed to be an incredibly joyous time of year seems to make that even more uh vivid for a lot of us and as wonderful as the science of mind is, the science of mind hasn't always been great uh, in helping us move through our challenges. So, you know, don't get me wrong, there are some wonderful techniques and lessons within the science of mind to direct us, but sometimes we misinterpret what is being said, and sometimes we just plain forget the, the truth about ourselves or the the truth it, that is within the, the teaching. But what I've noticed in, in my life anyway is uh, positive thing, thinking and affirmations are not always going to get me to that, that place of healing. And there is a place in the textbook where Dr. Holmes talks about it's really not the words, it's the conviction behind the words. And I think that that's part of it is. Um, it's unfortunate, but, but often I know I have glossed over by just trying to do the perfect treatment or do the 
the, that one affirmation that's just gonna knock it all away. And it doesn't. So what I know is that occasionally, you know, this is the deal for me, is doing my best to remain positive can be really draining. And it is really is supposed to be just the opposite of that. It is supposed to lift me up and fulfill me. So back to the holidays, it's not just this year, but every year, past and future. We, what we are mostly looking for, or at least I'm looking for this in my holiday season, is that I want my loving friends, my loving family to gather around and I want us to all have a really good time lifting each other up and feeling really blissful. But what I can also tell you is that it doesn't always work out like that. In the past, um, I know that 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 part of um, the reason that my holidays can bring up all kinds of feelings, not just happy ones, is because I have a past. And I have a past with my holidays. So one of the first things that I need to remember, that I need to know, is that there are no good or bad feelings. There are just feelings and how we respond to them is what actually matters. So when things aren't going my way, how do I respond to that? And I, I'm not sure how much I shared with you, but you know, and I, I know for all of you too, that Thanksgiving didn't look anything like what I'm used to. And I, my early response when I was trying to figure out what what we were going to do or what I was going to do. My early response was so disappointed and so, um, I guess, temperamental. You know, I, I threw a little internal tantrum around not being able to do what I wanted to do. And what I realized is that as, as a, and it took me a little bit of time, but as a little bit of time went by, I began to realize that my response is what was holding me back, not the fact that it was going to look different. So I had the opportunity to change that. And it wasn't always, you know, not every moment of it was easy. And, and we had, you know, we had a couple of scares over the holiday also um, around illnesses and things like that. But I can tell you everything is great. Everything is fine as of today. <laughs> But trying to remember that we are forever in the arms of love would be great. But my experience is that it's kind of hit and miss. Sometimes I remember and sometimes I don't. So to prepare for today's talk, I went ahead and I looked at my Christmas past. And as a child, I can tell you my mother, my grandmother, my aunt, who were these three women were very instrumental in my upbringing, of course, and, and my holidays. But the three of them, they really loved making the holidays special. And I swear that they were like magic. It was so amazing. And I thought that was just how everybody did it all the time and that it would be easy. So I tried very hard to create for my family, specifically my children, that kind of experience. And what I found out is that um, it's not always magical, that there were these other, other elements that were coming in that uh, were, you know, around my children. Like there were other families to be, you know, my, my husband's families had to be included too. And, and so it didn't always work out. It was not up to me to create everything, but I tried so hard and it just didn't always work. So what I know for many of us, and maybe you are one of these people, is that the holidays do not bring up great memories of family. It, in fact, it brings up not positive experiences. So 
I, I just want to ask you this question just to consider. So most presently, um, what you don't, let me see if I, what you don't have, or when you don't have these great experiences of the holidays, what do you do? You know, so what do I do now? And so the, the deal for me is I can't get to where I want to be without knowing where I am. And so I just want to offer you that same idea. You can't get to where you want to be without knowing where you are right now. And sometimes that means looking backwards to figure out how you got to where you are right now. And one of my favorite stories around this was, and this was years ago, um, but we were, I was at the, the center on a Sunday morning and, and I was pretty, it was early and, and the phone rang and I answered it and it was somebody who wanted directions to the center who wanted to come to the service that day. So I asked them, I said, well, sure, I can give you directions. Where are you? And their answer was, I don't know. And it's, I was like, well, how, how can I tell you where, how to get here if I don't know where you're coming? You know, where are you starting? And they're like, well, we've been driving for a while and I just don't know where we are. And, and so it, it took this very long conversation of, are you north of sound? Pam? I don't know. Are you, and it's like, can you see a street sign? I don't know where, you know, <laughs> so but we finally did, we figured out where they were and they, they did, they made it to service that day. But without knowing where they were, getting to where they wanted to be was really hard. So that's part of what today is about, is kind of going ahead and, and taking a brave look at some of the things that are affecting us from, um, from 2020, for sure, but, but maybe even further back than that. So um, looking at what holds us back isn't uh, I, I think this was another place in the science of mind. It's like, well, you don't want to concentrate on the things that you don't want in your life because that's inviting them in. So this isn't about concentrating on the things you don't want. This is just about figuring out where we are so we can move forward. So some of the challenges may have to do with people or situations that are no longer present in your life. And and it might be that, that there could be a lot of reasons why people or situations are no longer in your life, you know, divorce, death, just drifting apart, distance. But acknowledging those things and the sense of loss makes room for, for the good memories to, to come to the surface. It also makes us available to the wonderful people that are here right now right now. So we begin, what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you through a little process and, and you guys just wherever you are, just sort of sit back and relax. Um, and what I'll be doing, and, and this is, uh, like I said, this is Dr. Petra's uh, ritual. And it, it, we're going to be, you can see I have candles. So we're going to be lighting seven candles. And five of these are going to be bringing light to things from our past. And the other two, the last two, represent things that bring light to our lives right now. So just, uh, like I said, just relax and take a deep breath. So the first candle is going to represent all of those that have perished this year. And maybe in the last two or three years. But I want you to just consider all that you know about the people who have perished. Perished due to COVID. We're lost because, you know, how many black lives have been lost over recent years to violence, um, often by 
the police? How many lives have been lost in war? How many lives have been lost in climate disasters? And so just consider that loss, because I know for many of us, that loss, particularly during this time, has become very close and very personal, even when we didn't actually know the people or the situation. But as I light this first candle, I want you to just take a moment in silence and wherever you are, speak the name of someone who comes to mind and allow yourself to hold them in your heart. And take another deep breath. Our second candle is in memory of those who have made their transition and whom we personally lost in the last year or so. But it's a loss that we feel with great grief in our hearts. So of course, par parents or children, just close friends, but also in this category, pets fall into this category. All of those who won't be with us this Christmas, but as we remember and allow them to come up in our minds, we recognize that our tears are a testament of our love for them. And so as I light this candle, again, and in, in the silence of wherever you are, just speak the name of whoever comes into your mind and hold them in your heart. And deep breath. Our third candle is in recognition of family or friends. In my case, it is particularly family members who are too far away from us to be able to share this holiday season. I want you also to consider that whether that separation is by choice, because maybe the relationship just doesn't work when you're together, or if the separation is because of distance, just physical distance, or perhaps the choice was made because of finances. But again, just sit and consider those who are not going to be with you um, because they're too far away. And so as I light this third candle in your silence, speak the name of anyone that comes to mind and hold their image in your heart.
And another deep breath. The fourth candle. And we like this candle. We're going to look at um, to redeem our loss, our pain, our sadness, our anger. As our human heart grieve the loss that is due to other kinds of separation, um, divorce, betrayal, mental illness, irre irreconcilable differences. It doesn't mean that we don't love or miss them. And so we realize that our pain, again, is a testament of our love. But take a moment, see if anyone comes to mind, speak that name into the room and hold them in your heart. And a deep breath. Our fifth candle is to acknowledge other forms of loss. Loss of a job, loss of financial security, loss of your home. These are the times when our, fa our faith is tested but the joy of the holidays may seem very diminished. So what I know is that there are many in our community that have seen jobs and income disappear due to COVID. But I also in this place want to acknowledge and include frontline workers who are making sacrifices every day including separation from their families. And so again, if there's someone in your life or there's something in you that is bubbling up around this, as I light the fifth candle, speak that name into the room and hold them in your heart. Take another deep breath. Here we look at sharing light. And with the sixth candle, we want this to represent the gratitude that we have in our hearts for families and for friends that we do have that are present right now, here, today, every day. These are the family and friends that are still with us and are choosing to be a part of our world, our family, our community. These are the ones that we acknowledge are the very incarnation of the spirit of love for us right now. So again, as I light this candle, any names that have popped up for you, Speak them into the room and hold them in your heart.
and a deep breath. The seventh candle, this is the one that we, we will be lighting in honor of the faith and the gift of hope, the gift of love that the holiday season has to offer us. This is the time as we light this candle that we are affirming that we are the bringers of light in the midst of darkness. And in gratitude, we stand with all those who have worked so tirelessly for peace, for justice, and a healthy future. So as I light this candle, take a moment, speak the name of anyone that comes to mind, but also speak your own name affirming your intention to be a light bringer. So it's time for our closing treatment. And so as I speak these words, I would just like for all of you to know that this is the truth for all of us right here, right now. So with a deep breath, we relax into this moment knowing that there is only one thing, and that thing is God. Right now, today, I am unshakably immersed in knowing just that. I know it for myself, I know it for everyone present here. And together we see everything is a blessed event, including this holiday season. We accept that this time, as all time, reflects our realization of who, how, and what we truly are. Together, we consciously choose a deeper way, a deepening of our awareness of being the consciousness of God as in and through ourselves. Individually and collectively, we bring a compassionate heart to today's living. This compassionate heart holds us safe as we feel our own pain and the suffering of others. We know that we can do that and see it clearly and find a deeper truth. And so as we move through this, we develop the fine art of working with the mind of God. Individually, we draw from this inner truth, resilience, creative imagination, unwavering faith and bold action. Right now, I know that we are all endowed with all that is required to thrive while living in unprecedented, uncertain, and a swiftly changing life. 
we follow that divine guidance, which consistently re reveals itself. And in revealing itself, we then see how, where, and what is ours to give in order to wisely and warmly reinvent a wonderful life. I see through the temporary human darkness to the changeless, ever-present light, empowerment, and intelligence with which to forge a new vision for what is possible. And rather than keeping it just rumbling around in our heads, right now on a very personal level, we begin to bring it out in the open in order that someone or something is changed for the better by our unique and loving contribution to the whole. My life and your life are evidence of the infinite, divine, universal presence and power of God working throughout this human experience. And so we know and we affirm, may the light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers, to heal and not harm, to help and not hinder, to bless and not curse, to serve you, O spirit of freedom and light. And so it is. So a deep breath as we transition from the service to the law of circulation. So I would like for you to consider why you give to this, to this organization. And, um, and we're gonna, you know, just do our blessing as we always do, as soon as I find it. Well, I think I'll just say it for us. <laughs> so what I, I know right now is that um, every time you guys go online or mail a check, that it empowers this center to continue to create with great love. So I wanna thank you for those of you who are already contributing. And just know with me right now, that divine love through me blesses and multiplies this gift with all my heart and with all my mind. I know that I am saying yes to something I value with all others pres present here, we dedicate these gifts to the values and visions we share. Okay. So I do have a couple of announcements that I wanna share with you. The first one, and this is also in the, the newsletter, so uh, if you want the link, that's where to go to get it. Uh, but so plan ahead. This is, uh, I'm just going to read it because Madge worded it better than I did. <laughs> okay, plan ahead. <laughs> Tuesday, December 22nd, 6.30 p.m., keeping the tradition alive, we will gather by Zoom this year to celebrate solstice, Christmas, and other winter holidays by singing in community. This will be our 20th year. All are welcome. Members of the Inland Valley Women's Chorus, Women's Chorus, will lead traditional and new songs of the season, hope, peace, and joy. The community will sing along, muted, from their homes. It won't be quite the same as in person, but nonetheless, it is an important way to share in celebrating and spending 
prayers for peace and health in the new year ahead, ascending. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's there is a Zoom link and Madge is on online or she was anyway. So um, if there's something that you would like to ask her, you can do that after the service for you know. Uh, but you can find that link in your newsletter. Uh, I'll also probably put a reminder on our Facebook page. So um, yeah, it it sounds like fun to me. I'm planning on going. <laughs> so good. Uh, next announcement is the 2021 Intentional Giving Program is now underway. The form is attached in the newsletter, so take a look and please fill that out. Because this is maybe more important than ever, because um, this is how the board, when, once we have what people are planning on giving, and, and of course, you can always change it, uh, more, less, whatever. But uh, as, as you know, um, this is how we can plan on, on a budget and things for 2021. So it's, it is important that we know. Also, um, this helps us identify who considers themselves members. And there's a place on that form to check off if you consider yourself a member because we will be having our annual meeting in January. I believe it's gonna be January 24th, but uh, we'll, we'll know for sure soon. <laughs> and um, there's gonna be some important decisions to make this year. So do plan on it. And if you know people who are not on the Zoom calls or you wonder if they're opening their newsletter, please call them and ask them to take a look. It's important that everybody who wants to have a voice in this, in these decisions, has a voice. And so this is how we'll be able to identify you. You can return that form either by attaching it back into an email and sending it to the center, or you can just, uh, you know, print one out, fill it out, you can drop it at the center or mail it to the, to the center. All that works. I also want to remind you because we are definitely in the um, Christmas time and you know present buying and stuff. <laughs> there, I also put this in the newsletter for a couple of weeks, and I want to make sure that you know. Uh, I know a lot of us are going to be trying to buy locally, but the reality is we are also going to be buying online. If you buy from Amazon, if there is a link that's a smile Amazon link. And if you click on that, it will, it'll still ask you to, you know, log in your Amazon account. But what happens by using that particular link, there is a percentage of what you spend will go to the, to the center. And we, we get some, you know, almost every time that comes, there's money. I mean, there's money that comes in, but this could be substantial depending on how much you're planning on spending for the holidays. So uh, take a look and, and do that. So um, I think that's it. I'm hoping that David is still, are you listening, David? Because he's in the other room. David. Yes, I'm listening. Okay, so you wanna play us out, honey? Sure. And I'll just, just one more thing. We will be staying online for a while. So if you guys wanna hang and chat and ask Madge questions, <laughs> that would be the time. But so for right now, go ahead, David, play us out.
Thank you. So you can all see our Christmas tree when David was playing, right? <laughs> so we're ready. <laughs> okay. So I love you all. And thank you for coming. See you next week. Namaste.